of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As we follow Jesus our Savior who carries his cross on the way to his death and glorification, may we become more like him in mind and heart. His state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. The Pharisees accused him the just out of jealousy. Pilate condemned the innocent out of fear. The soldiers tortured him who healed so many. The priests made fun of him. His friends abandoned him. The crowds he had fed shouted for his death. By sinning, each one of us has acted in the same way. When we judged and spoke evil of others, when we let jealousy and greed poison our minds, when we hurt others with our hands or with our words, when we did not help those who are suffering and in need, whenever we have done any of these things, we have willfully crucified the Son of God and openly mocked him. And yet all along the road of pain, Jesus carried the sins of all mankind, guided by one single thought, to fulfill his Father's will and to make us understand his great love for us. Once we have put our faith in the love of Christ, who freely accepted to die for us, there is nothing in all creation that can separate us from him. So let us pray. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with all my heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, then do with me what you will.
We adore your Christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus is condemned to death. We have a law, the Jews replied, and according to that law he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard them say this, his fears increased. Re-entering the praetorium, he said to Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus made no answer. Pilate then said to him, Are you refusing to speak to me? Surely you know I have power to release you and I have power to crucify you. You would have no power over me, replied Jesus, if it had not been given from above. That is why the one who, who handed me over to you has the greatest guilt. So in the end Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Consider how Jesus, after having been scourged and crowned with the thorns, was unjustly condemned by Pilate to die on the cross. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always. Then do with me what you will. adore you o Christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world Jesus received the cross shoulder my yoke and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. Willingly, Jesus opens his arms and receives the cross. He knows that through this cross he will save us. How often do I complain when a little cross comes to me, such as an unpleasant task, sickness, failure or misunderstanding. Let me bear these crosses with my Savior for my own salvation and for the salvation of others. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always then do with me what you will.
Christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus falls the first time. We had all gone astray like a sheep, each taking his own way. And the Yahweh burdened him with the sins of all of us harshly dealt with, he bore it humbly. He never opened his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep that is dumb before its shearers, never opening its mouth. By force and by law he was taken. Would anyone plead his cause? Jesus falls because he is weak and exalted exhausted. Yet he knows that he must continue on this road of sorrow in order to accomplish the will of his Father. Lord, when I am tired and exhausted, when sickness drains my strength, when in my weakness I come close to despair, may you become my strength and my salvation. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always. Then do with me what you will. <clears throat> and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus is met by his blessed mother. As the child is father and mother stood there wondering at the things that were being said about him Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, You see this child, he is destined for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many be laid bare. Mary sees her son walking to his death, carrying his own cross, her heart pierced by the sword of suffering. When I am tormented by worries, by suffering and by sin, when I see the sufferings of people I love, let me remember the sufferings of Mary, 
that united to those of her son brought salvation to the world. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always. Then do with me what you will. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The cross is laid upon Simon of Cyrene. They laid him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, a Simon of Serene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was in from the country to carry his cross. Jesus is so weak that his executioners fear he may die on the way. In order to spare him for the crucifixion, they enlist the help of a stranger. May you, Lord, never be a stranger to me. Help me see your face in those who suffer, the hungry, the sick, the persecuted. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always. Then do with me what you will. <laughs> Christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Without beauty, without majesty, we saw him. No looks to attract our eyes. A thing despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow and familiar with his suffering, a man to make people screen their faces. He was despised and we took no account of him. Jesus is surrounded by hatred, ridicule, violence. Even his best friends fear the crowd and stay away from him. Only a woman Veronica dares to step out and show him a sign of compassion. Lord Jesus, 
Give me the courage to stand up for friends in need, for those who are unjustly criticized, condemned. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always. Then do with me what you will. and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus falls the second time. His state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are and being as all men are he was humbler yet even to accepting death death on a cross Jesus crumbles again under the weight of his cross it is not just weakness that makes him fall but the hatred of those around him and the weight of the sins he has taken upon himself. When the weight of sin and darkness of temptation pull me down, let me remember that you, Lord, by your suffering, and for me the strength to endure. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always. Then do with me what you will.
adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The women of Jerusalem mourn. Large numbers of people followed him, and of women too, who mourned and lamented him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep rather for yourselves and for your children. For the days will surely come when people will say, Happy are those who are barren, the wombs that have never borne, the breasts that have never suckled. For if men use the green wood like this, what will happen when it is dry? In spite of his many sufferings, Jesus still finds the time and the strength to think of others. In particular, he foresees the suffering of Jerusalem. Lord Jesus, let me forget my own sufferings and troubles, so as to keep my heart wide open to the sorrows and the miseries of those around me. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always. Then do with me what you will. Christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus falls for the third time. The fact is I know of nothing good living in me. Living that is in my unspiritual self. For though the will to do what is good is in me, the performance is not, with the result that instead of doing the good things I want to do, I carry out the sinful things I do not want. When I act against my will, then it is not my true self doing it, but sin which lives in me. In fact, this seems to be the rule, that every single time I want to do good, it is something evil that comes to hand. In my inmost self, I dearly love God's law, but I can see that my body follows a different law that battles against the law which my reason dictates. This is what makes me a prisoner of that law of sin which lives inside my body. 
what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body doomed to death? To fulfill the will of his Father, Jesus willingly accepted the agony and the suffering prepared for him. This suffering also included the physical weakness that made him stumble. O oh Lord, help me to do your will in spite of my weakness of body and soul. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, then do with me what you will. Cross of Jesus, cross of sorrow, when the blood of Christ was shed, adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus is stripped of his garments. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothing and divided it into four shares one for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, instead of tearing it, let's throw dice to decide who is to have it. In this way the words of scripture were fulfilled. They shared out my clothing among them. They cast lots for my cloth. This is exactly what the soldiers did. The Son of God has become utterly poor. Even his clothing has been taken away from him. Yet at this very moment, he holds the power to save all of humanity. O oh Lord, help me to keep myself free from money, power and pride so that I may follow you in doing your Father's will. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always. Then do with me what you will. We 
adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Jesus is nailed to the cross. When they reached the place called the skull, they crucified him there and the two criminals also, one on the right, the other on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, they do not know what they are doing. Then they cast lots to share out his clothing. The people stayed there watching. As for the leaders, they jeered at him. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers mocked him too, and when they approached to offer him vinegar, they said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there abused him. Are you not the Christ? He said, Save yourself and us as well. But the other spoke up and rebuked him. Have you no fear of God at all? He said, You got the same sentence as he did, but in our case we deserved it. We are paying for what we did, but this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus said, Jesus, he said, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Indeed, I promise you, Jesus replied, Today you will be with me in paradise. The time of the execution has come. Jesus' hands and feet are nailed to the cross. As I look at you, my Lord, I realize how much you love me. Open my eyes that I may see your goodness and love you in return. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always. Then do with me what you will. and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world Jesus dies on the cross from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth and above the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthan, that is, My God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, This man is calling on Elijah. And one of them ran quickly to get a sponge, which he dipped in vinegar. And putting it on a reed gave to him to drink. Wait, said the rest of them, and see if Elijah will come to save him. 
But Jesus, again crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. At that, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened and the bodies of many holy men rose from the dead. And these, after his resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with the others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place, and they were terrified and said, In truth, this was a son of God. Consider how Jesus, being consumed with anguish, after three hours' agony on the cross, abandoned himself to the weight of his body, bowed his head, and died. Even at the moment of death, your thoughts and words are for others. The good thief, your mother, your murderers. Help me to live and to die for my neighbors. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, then do with me what you will. <laughs> Christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus is taken down from the cross and many women were there watching from a distance. The same women who had followed Jesus from Galilee and looked after him. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. When it was evening, there came a rich man of Arimathea called Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate thereupon ordered it to be handed over. As Mary and Jesus' closest friends hold his lifeless body, they experience the suffering of separation. Lord, help me accept the suffering of separation from friends, from family, both in life and especially at the time of death. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, then do with me what you will. <laughs>
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus is a place in the sepulchre. It was now evening, and since it was preparation day, that is, vigil of the Sabbath, there came Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who himself lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God. And he boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, astonished that he should have died so soon, summoned the centurion and inquired if he was already dead. Having been assured of this by the centurion, he granted the corpse to Joseph, who bought a shroud, took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the shroud, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary of Magdala and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were watching and took note of where he was laid. The body of Jesus is taken to the tomb, the final step for any human being. For Jesus, however, it is only a step into a new life. When I stand at the grave site of someone I love, help me to remember that for those who believe in you, life is changed, not ended. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, then do with me what you will. have just concluded a journey of faith. We have followed our Savior as he freely walked to his death. This is a journey that, humanly speaking, we don't want to make. But it's a journey that we must make. One taught us to make this journey with a lot of meaning. His great love made it possible to carry the great burden of sin. After having made this journey with the Savior, we are encouraged to die to ourselves, to pick up our own cross and follow him, and to help many others to carry theirs, especially those who have heavier burdens. By dying with him, we have also risen with him to a new and a never-ending life. As we now remain in our homes, there where he has chosen to make a dwelling, let us take with us a spirit of thanksgiving to God and of service to all his children. Let us now pray according to the intentions of the Holy Father for the good of the church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who has made holy the wood of the cross by the life-giving blood of your Son, grant that all those who faithfully venerate the cross may constantly live under its protection. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The cross of our Savior is a banner as we journey through life. He leads us through suffering to the glory of the resurrection. This is the sign that has been given to us for our own salvation. And in this sign we impart the blessing of God on all of us. And may the Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God.